The one hour lecture called Study Less, Study Smart by Marty Lobdell is one of the most valuable videos out there on how to study as less as possible while still getting the best grades. I've recommended it many times on my channel, but I know that most of you don't have the time to watch it. So here's a summary of the key points specifically for GCSEs and A-levels. Marty cited a study from the University of Michigan that said that it takes around 25 minutes of pure focus until the brain starts getting distracted. And when your brain starts getting distracted, it makes it harder to study. So he recommends doing something called the Pomodoro method. And that basically means study for 25 or 30 minutes and then take a five minute break. And then after that, rinse and repeat. Now listen, my personal advice, that five minute break, make it something other than just scrolling through your phone or watching YouTube. It works best when it's something that doesn't engage your brain, something like stretching or going on a walk or having a chat with a friend or a family member. Something positive, so when you go back to studying, you go back in a positive mind frame and you enjoy studying. Now, we operate on something called positive and negative reinforcement. Think of how a parent raises their child or how a dog owner trains their dog. When it does something good, they reward it with a treat. And if it does something bad, they'll punish it. Maybe they'll yell at it or even hit it. Now, even after you grow up, that's still how your brain works. Which is why when you study, you should use positive reinforcement. Reward yourself after a long studying session by doing something you like. And then you'll subconsciously link studying with pleasure. And you could also use negative reinforcement. If you think that one day you didn't study that much or you were lacking, then you could punish yourself. Let's say you could take a cold shower or you force yourself to do 100 push-ups before you go to bed. And by doing that, you train your brain to want to study. Marty's second point was to have an area dedicated to just studying. If you think of every place you've studied in, you realize that most of them have primary functions different than studying. For example, a bedroom's primary function is sleep. A dining table's primary function is to eat. And a living room's primary function is to sit down and socialize or watch TV. The problem with studying in these places is that you've sort of trained your brain into thinking that these areas are not for studying, but for something else. And so if you study there, you might get distracted and think of the primary function of that area. For example, you're studying on the dining table and you start getting hungry. Or you're studying in a bedroom next to your bed, and you start getting sleepy. Which is why you should have an area, whether in your house or in your school or in a library, dedicated just for studying. And that makes it so that every time you go there, you only think about studying. Marty's third point was about the content itself. He explained that you have to distinguish between facts and concepts. Now, every subject is different. Some subjects rely more on memorizing facts and other subjects rely more on understanding concepts. Now, this is important because when you understand a concept, it will stick with you forever. I can still explain what osmosis is, even though I haven't recalled that information in two years because I understood it. I understood how it works. So try to use concepts as often as possible. If you just try to brute force your way by memorizing everything, you're eventually going to get mixed up somewhere. And that's going to cause you to lose marks on a paper because you didn't really recall the information that well. But if you understand a concept, not only do you have to spend less time studying, but it will stick with you for way longer. Now, Marty also distinguished between recognizing and actually remembering information. Sometimes our brain tricks us by giving us the impression that we've memorized information when we really haven't. Now, I haven't opened my chemistry textbook in around two years, but I'm sure that if I open it right now, I'll recognize a lot of the information in it even to the point where my brain might convince me that I have it memorized. As soon as I close the textbook and I try to recall some of the information, maybe about titration, for example, I'll struggle. I won't recall anything. To solve this, you need to do flashcards and practice questions as soon as you've learned information. If you just read some notes for a couple of minutes and then say to yourself, ah, that's it, I've memorized it, then you've deluded yourself. Rather, after going through some content, you need to do practice questions or flashcards to make sure you've consolidated that information and so that you know for sure that you've memorized that information. Marty also touched on a topic I always talk about, which is sleep. If you didn't know, the phase of sleep when your brain starts storing information long term is called REM sleep. But how do you know if you get enough REM sleep? Well, my bro science method is that REM sleep is usually the phase of sleep when you dream the most. So if you think that you don't dream at all or you don't really remember your dreams that much, that means that you might not get enough REM sleep. If you think you don't get enough REM sleep in, try to sleep longer. And if that doesn't work, try to do stuff that increases your sleep quality. Now, this topic is very important, which is why I made a whole video dedicated towards it, dedicated towards how to optimize your sleep, especially for studying. And I'll link to that video at the end of this video. Marty also advises that you try to teach other people. My computer science teacher always tells the class the same thing. He always tells us that when you learn, try to learn as if you're gonna teach someone else. And that makes sense because when you're in an exam, in a way, you're sort of teaching someone else. You're writing it down on the paper and hoping that the person that marks it understands it enough, as in it matches the mark scheme. So when you learn something, try to go to a friend or a teacher and try to explain it to them. If they say, nah, I don't really understand that, and then you can't explain it to them after that, that means you haven't learned it enough. Finally, Marty's last point is to use mnemonics to memorize things that are difficult to memorize. Mnemonics is a very vague term and includes things like acronyms, rhymes, and also just memorable sentences. 
One of the most famous examples is when you use a screwdriver, how do you know which way to turn it? I think most of you will say righty tighty, lefty loosey. Even in A-level maths this year, we use it to memorize trig identities. For example, one with a tan is sexy and one in a cot is cozy. You could also use acronyms. One we use in physics to describe the assumptions we make about particles in the kinetic theory model is called RAVED. If you're struggling to memorize any piece of information, try to make a mnemonic about it. It will save you time and make studying more enjoyable.